Hi, this is Adam with Affinity Energy, and I'm here today to just talk a little bit about trackers and some of the dialogue that goes around how trackers and following the sun and how important it is uh, for the trackers to be accurate in following exactly where the sun is going to be, uh, which I believe to not entirely be uh, a valid case, and I'm going to sort of explain with the math what that means. So what you would think is that you wanna have the modules pointed as close as possible to the trajectory of the sun across the sky on a continuous basis. But in reality, what you have is a tracker actuator motor that periodically is going to move the trackers forward uh, across the path of the sun to try and keep it relatively close. But I don't know if you've ever sat down and done the math uh, like I have, but uh, in reality, you don't need to follow it that closely. So if you take the cosine of the angle between where the sun is located and where the module is pointed, that will give you the ratio of the surface area of the module as it's pointed to the sun. So if the module and the sun are exactly in alignment, the cosine of zero degrees is one, so you get exactly the full module pointed towards the sun. But a small angle gives you a very small uh, cosine. So if this angle were two and a half degrees, then you're getting 99.9% of the module surface exposed directly to the sun. So to have the module two and a half degrees behind the sun and move it five degrees forward past the sun will keep you within 99.9% .9 of the energy that that module would be able to produce. So knowing that the sun moves 360 degrees around the earth in 24 hours, that means that it's moving a quarter of a degree per minute, that's 15 degrees per hour uh, moving from east to west. Uh, and at a quarter of a degree per minute, a five minute move means that every, five, every 20 minutes, you can increment the module's orientation five degrees forward and keep it at that 99.9% .9 energy transfer. So now if we talk about what the DC-AC ratio is, with a fixed site, a DC-AC ratio might typically be 1.25 to 1.3, meaning that if you've got a one megawatt inverter, you're gonna have 1.2 to 1.3 megawatts of DC solar panels behind that. Uh, with a tracker site, you can keep the DC-AC ratio a little bit lower. So if we assume that we have a 1.1 to 1.15 DC-AC ratio, uh, that means that we've got uh, 150 kilowatts of extra solar behind a one megawatt inverter. Uh, and that being the case, that's put in to account for some of the losses that you'll have uh, in getting the DC energy collected and brought back to the inverter. So we have a couple categories of loss here. We have mismatch, which might be a 1% loss because you've got if you've got 325 watt panels, some of them are gonna be 325.1, some of them are gonna be 325.7, some of them are gonna be 328 watt modules. So you've got a little bit of loss from mismatch. Uh, and then we've got some I squared R losses. Uh, so losses of power from the current flowing through the conductors, which are have a very small amount of resistance in them. So you might have another 1% of loss uh, from I squared R losses. And the last major category is soiling. So dirt accumulating on the surface of the module, um, dirt, <laughs> pollen, any other environmental contaminants. And that might be one to maybe even 3% loss um, in the worst case. So when you total that up, you have about 5% of loss of DC power before it gets to the inverter. So we said here that we've got 1.1 to 1.15 DC AC ratio. So you still taking out this 5% loss have an extra five to 10% DC behind the inverter. And if you try to keep the, if you calculate the angle required in order to keep this additional loss at 5% or less, you can actually have 18 degrees of angle. So the cosine of 18 degrees is 95.95. Uh, so you get 95% of the energy at 18 degrees of difference between where the sun is and where the panel is. 
So if you plan on doing a 36 degree move from 18 degrees behind the sun to 18 degrees ahead of the sun, that would be one move every 2.5 hours. So in a typical solar site where you're trying to continuously move the panels to track as close to the sun as possible, I make the argument that the math pencils out so that you don't have to do it on a continuous one minute, five minute, 10 minute basis. You could do it as far out as once an hour and track the sun with better than 95, 97% of the energy. And that energy is in excess of the capacity of the inverter anyway. So you're not even losing anything doing a move once every two hours. That of course assumes it's a clear sky day. If it's a cloudy day, then you wanna be a little bit closer to the sun. But not sure if you'd ever thought through how the, the physics or the math around solar trackers and tracking the sun works, but just wanted to walk through that with you and uh, hope you got something out of it.